A very good evening to you all. I'm so happy to be here. I couldn't thank the RMAC uh, enough for this, uh, for this amazing uh, ability to see our grandfather, uh, see, our, uh, see our loved one as a, as a young man. So just to, uh, just to start off with uh, relevance. Um, so when uh, Hatfield Chilson came to Washington uh, in the late 50s, uh, there were 48 stars on the flag. They had a, a flag flying across the, the Capitol and it had 48 stars on it and they gave it to him. And then by the time he left Washington, there were 50 stars on the flag. He worked on getting uh, Hawaii and Alaska added to the Union. I don't know where we'd be energy-wise and natural resources-wise if we hadn't gotten Alaska into statehood, but that's the kind of scale we're talking about for achievement. And it's not that it's his, it's that <laughs> what can happen through a, a great uh, athletic conference, structured collegiate athletics. He's, a, he's from a steel town. From, he's from Pueblo a bad part of Pueblo, he's a steel worker, how's he going to get anywhere? RMAC, the, the RFAC, uh, the Athletic Conference and Structured Collegiate Athletics. This is so important and so it makes it even more of an honor. Um, <clears throat> so from 1910 to 1937, the CU team was called the Silver and Gold and it was inside of the Rocky Mountain Faculty, for some reason they called it faculty, Rocky Mountain Faculty Athletic Conference. Havel Chilson was the captain of three athletic teams sanctioned by the R. RMFAC, uh, baseball, basketball, and football. Uh, all of his family here feel tremendous gratitude uh, for your recognizing this, uh, this our loved one. He became affectionately known as Chili, as the, as the um, film did. The film did such a good job. I'm sorry that I'm going to repeat some of the items. Uh, I didn't expect to do so thorough a job. It's outstanding. So thanks to Commissioner Graham, to uh, Jacqueline Lamb, for, uh, uh, and then Ms. Ford, and uh, Mr. Carter, and Ms. McGowan. The structure of an athletic conference is equivalent to a Greeks setting aside land for the Olympics Games in Greece, in an actual city there. It provided a vital form and coordinated effect. This was the prerequisite that makes young men and young women excited to use their capacities to their fullest extent. There, these are the virtues of competition. There would be no American free market if there were not sanctioned collegiate competition. Without an athletic conference, the structured member of this that he took place in, it's unlikely that he would have been putting two stars on the flag, unlikely he would have been appointed to be a federal judge. I'm curious to hear about how athletics benefited the lives of your loved ones. I'm going to be wrapped with attention when you're up here telling us about it, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing those films and examining more of that, well, what memorabilia remains over there on your family members as well. It's a great field. I'd like to introduce on our side the, <clears throat> uh, oh, and then just a, uh, uh, just one more comment on, on Div 2. Div 2 and Div 3, in my opinion, is where the future leaders are going to come from. These GPA uh, scores, I mean, are those amazing or what? Uh, unbelievable high GPAs. Um, they, they could only dream about such a thing in Div 1 schools. Uh, so <clears throat> my most amazing and my most uh, admired Colorado figures are my grandfather and Bill Armstrong. So it's, it just uh, warms my heart to see Colorado Christian University doing so well in their athletic programs. So on our end for family, I'd like to introduce Hatfield Chilson's uh, granddaughter, Molly Chilson. If you would stand with me. Uh, <clears throat> Molly, Molly Chilson is attorney for, is district attorney for Colorado's 11th, 11th district, encompassing Chafee, Park, Custer, Fremont uh, counties. Molly went to CU Law, like Chile, and present also is her son, Sam Curley, uh, Chile's uh, grandson, uh, great grandson, and he's a mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sam is a senior at Salida High School and captain of the Salida High, uh, High School cross country team and carries a, a GPA 4.3, sits at the top of his class. Uh, and the following, <clears throat> the following members could not be present today. Hatfield's only uh, child, of course, as we saw on the screen, is uh, John Hatfield Chilson. John is my dad and Molly's dad. He was a champ wrestler of England. He was the champion for uh, New England wrestling when he was at Dartmouth. And uh, he then went into um, the Marine Corps thereafter. He is, his best thing is his rodeo. Rodeo and horsemanship is one of the acclaimed um, in this area. And then he, uh, he retired and then had great success developing real estate and water rights. Uh, so our dad, John, also got his degree from uh, CU Law. And our mom is uh, Judith Casey of Denver. She's a great skier. Cole Chilson is Hatfield Chilson's younger great-grandson and my son. He is an accomplished soccer player and his father thinks that some of Chile's hand-eye coordination uh, made its way into Cole. Uh, I'm a mortgage lender in Denver and um, Chile loved travel and he went everywhere with his wife Marion. Marion is at least half, the half of the equation of his success, if you know what I mean. 
And um, <clears throat> so I went uh, and uh, lived in China and learned Chinese, went and lived in Germany, so he graduate school. So that he infused into his family uh, his enthusiasms. Uh, I raced cross country in college and wrestled. Uh, speaking to the student athletes among us and to their parents, those of you who do not have $300,000 for tuition and expenses right now in your checking account. Uh, despite being a star, Hatfield did not have a scholarship. Didn't get a scholarship, no free ride. He got a hundred bucks seed money from Rotary of Pueblo. Uh, <laughs> and he lost that on his way to his, uh, uh, he lost it on the way up there. Uh, so he had no, um, he had no way to earn. And so what he did is he uh, acquired the jobs that he could uh, at CU and uh, he did graduate. It's because he was able to graduate uh, that he was able to do these things. It suggests that it can be done even if the money does not appear like it's there. It can be done, it is worth it. It is worth the sacrifice. Uh, his brother died when he was young. He lost his father and his childhood. So we're not talking about an, a really together family here. You don't need a together family, apparently, to make it like he did. He lost, um, <clears throat> so the takeaway from it is this. It's an athletic program that appears to have made him in large part. He had uh, less than nothing and every liability, every source of discouragement, no parental support. And I mentioned steel worker. He even worked at a quarry. He had to make beds in college. Is this kind of humbling? He had to make beds in college, in Colorado University, to make ends meet, and then had to go up to the refinery in Wyoming to play baseball and do the oil in order to uh, afford college, get through. So, I mean, <clears throat> uh, as well, like older lawyers have uh, told my sister that practiced in front of him as a federal judge, they remember him as a force. Eisenhower uh, used him in the interior to advance his legislation for all of the things that uh, they needed to do inside the interior, in other words, all the physical possessions of the U.S. and the states and Puerto Rico and all these other uh, outlying uh, lands. And he was not a power driver, he was a builder of consensus, and that's why the legislation didn't get through uh, the Congress uh, in the first term under Eisenhower, uh, but once they put my grandfather in charge, he got the legislation through by consensus, not through power driving, not through house of cards, not through Machiavellian techniques, but by friendship and authentic love of people. Um, he uh, married uh, Marion, of course, and she was uh, from a family in Yampa, Colorado, not exactly Manhattan. So uh, she as well was able to uh, come from a not so known place and uh, achieve great things. I was told constantly how she would go into a meeting, uh, a county meeting, and she would approach all those present and would advance Chile's agenda politically. So that's why we say half of her, she was a lot of his success. Um, <clears throat> So, um, such a great honor to be here and to be able to remember him with family. As well, those of uh, us with a common core belief that the beauty of, uh, of what role athletics can play in improving a life. Uh, I don't think I would have graduated college without athletics. No way, no chance. He served on the Betcher Foundation and Loveland got a grant from this, as, it, as we've mentioned. Uh, and then uh, he did shape Colorado mineral uh, policy, but it was also in water. Water conservancy, that was a, the idea of a water conservancy district was something that he originally founded. First place in the country it ever happened was Colorado, and he's the one that put it together. Uh, the point being that he wanted to help people to move here and make the resources available to make that happen. Um, it propelled him to be effective in those captainships. The captainships were, I think, what allowed him to be, then be able to build consensus. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, he never brought up to me his glory days in athletics. He would just field questions. He never talked about smarts or talent. He would only talk about work, 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 work. Just work hard at it and somehow you'll then get lucky. And that's what he felt he got, was just got lucky after working so hard. Um, and then uh, if you'd uh, just uh, indulge me for one sec, this, uh, at the end here, let's just talk about what it takes to do a, uh, a twist pass. Uh, he's five foot eight. How tall are the linemen? They're quite a bit taller than he is. He has to jump up in the air and make it about, he has about a quarter second to make a decision to go this receiver, alternate receiver, or main receiver. Uh, that's the kind of um, uh, talent that he had to bring to his football blade. And uh, it's the kind of thing that he brought to the, uh, when he was arguing in front of the Supreme Court, he also was able to make it physical. He won in front of the Supreme Court in terms of water decisions so that Colorado could retain its water. So. Uh, you may think it's irrelevant, but the grit, it's that grit that he had in finding your capabilities and started with the athletic and then just realized it later in his life. But it was that toughness and that grit that seemed to be the force that set him apart. Lawyers remembered him as civil, prepared, and appropriate, and a force in the courtroom. Uh, and his community service was amazing. Uh, walking down the street, you would not have picked him for athletic, 
He was not a big guy. You don't have to be big, and you don't need the physique. You don't need the physique. He didn't have it. Look at him. He did not have the physique to be a great quarterback, but he did it. And, and if you don't have the physique that you wish you were born with, I certainly wasn't, you can still make it happen because he, he did it through techniques and innovating in techniques, not by being the biggest or the strongest. Uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing about all of your family members. I thank, again, the RMAC for this tremendous opportunity and this opportunity to remember him as a young man.